When you think ground classes, you think pilot preparation. Hello, pilots and future pilots. You are watching Pilot Preparation, and today we'll be continuing a chapter called Jet Engine, for which the first part is already made and uploaded on YouTube with the name Introduction to Jet Engine. You can watch that video as it summarizes the overall jet engine and the physics behind the jet engine. So today we'll be covering the different section of jet engine, the different devices inside jet engine. So the first device is engine's air inlet. That is nothing but the casing, which we will talk about. But for now, we'll not talk about that casing because this is not the regular class. And this part does not score anything to us in DGC exam. So whatever will help us to score in DGC exam is something that is important to us in YouTube classes, isn't it? But surely that topic is important in general for the pilot because it helps to avoid risks and damages that could happen to a plane. So do study that topic with us in a regular class. So now we'll study about the compressor. What is compressor, where it is placed and why we use it. Compressor is a device which increases the air pressure. That means it increases the incoming air's pressure. It increases, it compresses the air. Now where it is placed, it is placed right after the inlet veins. So right after the air inlet, it goes and strikes to the compressor. After the compressor, we have combustion chamber. After that, we have turbine. And after that, we have exhaust. So this is how we know the body of a jet engine. Why the compressor is important? Because compressor increases the pressure. It gives us the high pressure air. Now this high pressure air goes through the combustion chamber and hits the turbine. The turbine rotates because of this high pressure air. Because this high pressure air generates high thrust. High thrust is nothing but high perpendicular force that is required to hit the turbine and rotate the turbine like a madman. Now let's look at the principle of compressor. What we know, it takes the incoming high velocity air and then increases the pressure of it. So what we know, it converts the high velocity air or we can say it converts the kinetic energy of the air into pressure energy or potential energy, isn't it? So we can say the principle is to convert the kinetic energy of air into pressure energy or potential energy. That is what a compressor do. Now the compressor are of two types. The first type is called centrifugal flow compressor. Another type is called axial flow compressor. Let me draw the diagram for both and then we'll see the real diagram so that you will be able to capture the design of the diagram very well. So let's see the centrifugal flow type compressor. Centrifugal flow type compressor is nothing but a disc. You know, it looks like a disc. So this will be the eye of the compressor with the, a bulge like this. And then it will be having a blades like this. These blades are nothing but guide vanes, we can say. So this is nothing but the blades and now our compressor is ready. It will be attached to a shaft also, which I am trying to ignore for now so that you will understand well. And uh, here we have the air inlet. So air is coming like this and it is hitting the eye of the compressor. Now, once the air hits the eye of the compressor, what happens? What happens after this? Does it go like this? No, it cannot go like this because our compressor does not have a hole. It is like a disc. So if the air has to go to the next side, what it will do? It will go radially outward. But actually the air does not go radially outward. It is thrown radially outward by the rotating compressor. So what is happening? The air is coming like this, then it is thrown radially outward like this. This is what our compressor is doing continuously. So remember this term radially outward because this comes sometimes for one mark. So remember that air which is coming and hitting the eye of the impeller, this is called as impeller, will go radially outwards through the tip of the compressor and it will go backward. Now that we already talked about radially outward, radially outward, we should also see the name of the compressor that is centrifugal flow compressor. The centrifugal means radially outward. That means center from center, the force is going outward. That is nothing but centrifugal. If it would be centripetal, what would have happened? Then it would be radially inward. That means the, it would be center seeking force. Whereas it is 
opposite to that it is going away from the center so it is radially outward that is the reason it is called centrifugal flow compressor by the name itself you will get that there would be a disc and the air will be flowing radially outward that is nothing but centrifugal force or centrifugal uh, centrifugal flow compressor now let's talk about the axial flow compressor if you see a axial flow compressor it will look like a fan but more blades than a fan it has more number of blades it is uh, like the blades which i have made are also very less but for your understanding you can imagine how it looks it is also pro it is also found in the air inlet uh, right after the air inlet so what happens this time when the air hits the eye of the compressor what happens it passes through it just like this it passes through it it goes through the axis of the compressor it goes through the axis of the compressor that is the reason it is called axial flow compressor and what about these blades how are these blades so if this is the center of the compressor the blades are perpendicular or almost perpendicular to the head to the center to the axis so the blades are almost perpendicular they are not like our fan blades which are parallel like this like this like this the blades are continuously perpendicular to the center so we'll see the diagram now and we'll have a better understanding so this is the centrifugal compressor and this is axial compressor so what we can see in centrifugal compressor the air inlet comes like this and it hits the eye of the impeller then it goes like this and it goes down the air comes like this and then it goes like this and then it goes down so this is how the centrifugal flow type compressor works whereas in the case of axial flow compressor what happens you can see how axial compressor does not have only one flower petal type compressor it has a many flower petal type compressor these flower petal type compressor is also known as rotors of the compressor so these are called rotors rotors in a compressor this is the part which rotates so that is the reason it is called as rotors now let's talk about the centrifugal flow compressor what we know about centrifugal compressor that first the turbine will rotate and then the shaft will rotate and that will rotate the compressor that is common in both axial and centrifugal compressor but this rotation of the compressor sucks a lot of air this rotation of the compressor helps in sucking a lot of air and also the plane is also moving at a very high velocity that will also help in sucking a lot of air now this air is not that much required like we are getting a lot of air so that should go through some door you know there should be a door which will be opening half or full or partial or it will directly block all the air if the engine is not requiring it at all so what we want is a guide vane right rotating guide vanes so we want a rotating guide vanes which will be installed at the eye of the impeller this is the eye this is the eye where the air is going continuously so here we will have a inlet guide vanes or rotating guide vanes so how does this rotating guide vanes look it looks like this you can see this part here the rotating guide vanes are of blue colors so what will happen is if the air is required too much the rotating guide vanes will become like this so that the air can pass like this whereas if the air is not that much required then the rotating guide vanes will rotate like this so now uh, some air will get stopped whereas other air will be able to pass or there will be a little resistance between the air to pass through it so that is what a rotating guide vanes do it allows a certain amount of air to come inside so what we learned till now is that air air comes continuously to the eye of the impeller this is called as impeller impeller is nothing but the blades on the centrifugal compressor so it goes to the impeller via rotating guide vanes and once it reaches there it goes radially outward it goes radially outward it goes like this radially outward it again the the air comes and it goes radially outward again the air comes then it goes radially outward where the air is getting compressed let's see that right now so if you see this part if you see this di diagram you will understand how the pressure is increased in the impeller part or the impeller section so if the air is coming like this it is passing through this part right it is passing through this part 
and this part is nothing but divergent in nature if you see all the blades are nothing but divergent in nature so if they are divergent in nature we know velocity is decreasing velocity is decreasing in this part and pressure is increasing and one more thing which is there is the temperature is also increasing because we know the pressure and temperature increases together in the case of divergent nozzle whereas in the convergent case what happens the velocity increases the pressure decreases and temperature also decreases so in this case all the impeller blades are made in such a way that it looks like a divergent nozzle and this divergent nozzle increases the pressure to many folds so we can see how the compressor is increasing the pressure but this is not all you know the some part of air the remaining part of pressure which we get through the compressor is through the diffuser the diffuser are placed right after the impeller so once the air is hitting like this it is going through the impeller once it goes through the impeller 50% of the pressure has been increased now the next 50% is increased with the help of diffuser this part you can see this golden part this part is called as diffuser how the diffuser actually look again it is nothing but a divergent nozzle and nothing else so diffuser will be like this like this and like this so every diffuser part is like this you can see the side view i have i have drawn like this only you can see this and this it is same only so you can see how diffuser is also trying to increase the pressure what is the contribution of impeller and diffuser in increasing the air pressure let's see that so the pressure rise contribution in centrifugal compressor is done equally by impeller and diffuser both are given gold medal for that reason and we can say if if the pressure is increased from 1 pascal to 4 pascal then 2 pascal pressure is increased by impeller and the next 2 pascal pressure is increased by the diffuser for the same amount of air and with this example i have taught you one very important thing that is the compression ratio of a single stage centrifugal compressor is 4 ratio 1 that means 4 ratio 1 that is nothing but if the air inlet is at 1 pascal then at the outlet of the first centrifugal compressor it will become 4 times that is 4 pascal so air inlet which is coming at 1 pascal will be converted to 4 pascal isn't that amazing that is what a single stage centrifugal compressor do but that is not it you know that is not enough for us for a jet engine what we do we take the combination of two centrifugal compressor that means we have double stage centrifugal compressor we can take three stage also can we take three stage no actually we cannot take three stage or three stages of centrifugal compressor like this why we cannot have three centrifugal compressor the design would be very complex second is the load will be very high and there would be no high efficiency provided with three centrifugal compressor because every compressor takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of fuel to rotate right so we don't want to make our full engine non profitable otherwise we will be costing a lot to the passenger and also the tip speeds at the extreme centrifugal loading prohibit the efficient operation of the third stage so that is the reason we avoid the third stage of the centrifugal compressor and we only have two stages of centrifugal compressor if we have two stages of centrifugal compressor we get a good compression ratio so earlier we had 1 by 4 but with two stage we have 1 by 4 into 1 by 4 which is around which is which should be 1 by 16 but actually we get 15 raised to 1 that is the amount of compression we get after two stages of centrifugal compressor so earlier we had 1 pascal of air which would be converted to 15 times that is 15 pascal of air the pressure the same amount of air will be pressurized to 15 pascal after the first stage what we know that it goes the air goes through the impeller the air goes through the impeller like this the air goes like this it goes through the impeller and there is one more compressor so it goes again through the impeller here right so what we know that the air comes like this it goes through the impeller then it goes through the diffuser here it goes through the diffuser and it goes to the next part 
Then in the next part also it is hit to the eye of the impeller. And again it goes like this. And this time it does not go outside through the diffuser. It goes outside with the help of cascading veins. These cascading veins guide the air to flow towards the combustion chamber. So at the elbows of the compressor, at the elbow or at the end part of the compressor, comma outlet casing, cascade veins are fitted. These veins turn the air smoothly through 90 degree and complete diffusion. That means these veins not only do the diffusion wala part, they act like a diffuser, but also they convert the air or we can say they rotate the air 90 degree so that it can go to the combustion chamber. So the air was going like this. So earlier the air was going like this, right? So it will be converted to 90 degree. It will be turned towards 90 degree and it will be now going to the combustion chamber. Combustion chamber. So this is what a diffuser do. But this diagram is not looking beautiful. So let's have a beautiful diagram to have a better understanding. So what happens? The air goes through the impeller like this impeller and then it goes through the cascade veins and it goes through this pipe type things that is nothing but cascade vein again and uh, it is attached to the elbow of the compressor and then it goes to the combustion chamber here we're, we're, we will be having combustion chamber now let's look into some questions which are important so the first question is the purpose of diffuser vein is to increase the charge temperature what is charge charge is nothing but air fuel mixture so do we uh, have diffuser to increase the charge temperature? No. To convert pressure energy to kinetic energy? Definitely not. It is actually the inverse. So to increase the air velocity? Mm, actually no. To convert kinetic energy to pressure energy? Yes, yes, yes. We want to convert the kinetic energy of air into pressure energy, right? So that is the reason we are using diffuser veins because that contribute to the 50% of the pressure 50% of the pressure outlet pressure which we get and what is the other 50% that is done by the impeller so this is our first question now comes the second question the major disadvantage of a centrifugal compressor is that it cannot cope with the large mass flow of air it cannot be used for a turbojet engine a very large turbine is required it is more prone to damage compared to other turbine. Think and answer. Now let me tell you one thing. Centrifugal compressors are not used by a heavy plane. It, they are also not used by a better version of a plane. Now think why that would be. It is because it cannot take a large mass of air. It cannot comprehend a large mass of air that is the reason it is not used in a big planes so major disadvantage of centrifugal compressor is it cannot cope with large mass of air as you can see it is a disc right axial flow will be able to compress very nicely because the air is able to pass through it so more amount of air will be able to pass through it whereas in the case of disc what will happen in the case of disc you have this disc like this so air will be passing through this region Whereas in the axial flow compressor, what is happening? Uh, the air is passing through the center, like through the axis only. So there is a large volume of air which can pass through the axial flow compressor. And that is the reason the efficiency of axial flow compressor is way more than centrifugal flow compressor. Now we will talk about axial flow compressor. What we know about axial flow compressor, that it contains several rows, not one, but several rows of rotating blades but that is half true how it is half true because we are not talking about very important point that it also contains stator blades that means stationary blades it contains not only rotor blades but also stationary blades which are equal in amount like a rotor blade so if there are eight rotor blades then there would be eight stator blade sets not blade but blade sets so why we are saying blades? Because it actually looks like a blade. If, if you have your hand here, it will get cut clearly uh, because it is very strong as well, isn't it? So these are the rotors. This is the rotor. So where is the stator? Stator is attached to the casing of the engine. 
it is attached to the casing of the engine and it is attached in between the rotors that means there will be one pair of rotors there will be one pair of rotor like this is the rotor here then the next part will be stator the stator will be at the back side the stator will be at the back side like this here and here it will be like this it will be having the blades like this so the stator and rotor combination is like this so once the air passes through the rotor then it get hit by the stator then again it passes through the rotor then it again get hit by the stator then again it passes through the rotor then again it get hit by the stator why am i saying it so many times because you want to understand how much torture the air passes through once it passes through the rotor the pressure is already increased because again this rotor also act like a divergent duct so it, the rotors are nothing but we can say impeller the rotors act like an impeller whereas the stators they act like a diffuser so we can say rotors are nothing but impeller stators are nothing but diffuser in both the type of compressor the names are different in a uh, uh, axial flow compressor axial compressor we talk rotor and stator and centrifugal compressor we have impeller and diffuser what we have learned till now we can imagine like this that we have we have first set of rotors then we have another set of stators then we have next set of rotors then we have another set of stators then we have next set of rotors this rotor is nothing but this will be continuously rotating like this then stators will be stationary they will be just like that why we want stator we want stator to cut the velocity if the velocity is high the compression would be not higher because velocity and pressure is kind of inversely proportional so what we can say is we want to cut this high velocity so first of all this rotor is continuously rotating and increasing the pressure of the air it is hitting the air and increasing the pressure of the air but then as it is gaining the velocity along with the pressure this velocity vector is getting cut with the help of stator because as it is coming the air is coming after the rotor when the air strikes the stator it is losing its velocity vector and that velocity vector is directly converted to pressure energy and this happens multiple times so you can see this diagram and you can imagine how this must be happening so you can see this is the inlet and after the inlet because of this shape of our uh, because of this shape of our inlet veins it is uh, like uh, a convergent duct so that is the reason air air speed decreases here and after this you can see the pressure is continuously increasing the pressure is you can see the pressure is continuously increasing isn't it now let's see the velocity if you see the velocity here velocity is not continuously increasing it is getting cut like if you see this part it was first increasing then it decreased then it increased then it decreased where it is increasing it is increasing because of the rotors because of the rotors the velocity is increasing and also the pressure is increasing whereas this velocity vector is getting cut equally at all stages because of the stator veins so this stator veins is decreasing the velocity which is getting converted to pressure energy you can see this is getting converted to pressure energy that is the reason this bar is getting increased at every stage and that is the reason it is a steep upward curve it looks like an exponential curve isn't it because that much compression a uh, axial flow compressor do so let's see what what is there in the uh, like theory so it is talking about one stage what is one stage one stage consists of one stator one stator and one rotor that means this is the first stage it has one stator and one rotor then this is the second stage again one state one rotor and one stator then again we have third stage it has again one rotor and one stator one stator set and one rotor set this is how we create stages after stages of axial flow compressor now what we know th this we already studied that one rotor is equals to impeller and stator is equals to diff diffuser this is not important this is just for your understanding now this is very important point that the pressure rise across 
each stage is about 1.1 to 1.2 ratio 1. That means if one pascal air is coming, one pascal pressure air is coming, then it will be converted to 1.1 to 1.2 pascal of air at every single stage. And this when exponentially when you stack one stage after the second stage after the third stage after 8 to 10 stages after 8 to 10 plus stages we get the compression ratio as great as 35 ratio 1 that is more than double of the centrifugal compressor isn't that amazing now let's look into the questions regarding axial flow compressor so the first question is the pressure rise across each stage of axial flow compressor is first greater than that of centrifugal compressor between 3 and 5 to 1 twice the inlet pressure between 1.1 to 1.2 to 1 we already know the answer that should be we just learned about this it should be between 1.1 to 1.2 to 1 because it is not greater than the centrifugal compressor at each stage if we see one stage of a centrifugal compressor we know that one stage of centrifugal compressor compresses 4 to 1 right here it is only happening 1.1 to 1.2 to 1 right so it is lesser but when we stack a lot of stages it is like 8 plus or 10 plus uh, stages are stacked together then we get 35 to 1 which is almost like double of the centrifugal compressor so this is the correct answer option fourth now the ring blade which some uh, sometimes precede the first rotor stage of the of an axial flow compressor are called what you might be not knowing this because this is something which I wanted to cover with the question itself. So ring blades which sometimes precede the first rotor stage. You can see like if you check the option that is the first stage uh, stator blades, variable inlet guide vanes, first stage diffuser blade and nozzle guide vanes. What should be the answer? We already know that all the stages of rotor and stator start with rotors. So there should be first rotors, rotor blades, and then it, the stator blade will be coming. If the stator blade are coming at the starting, then there is no use because the velocity is not increased yet. So we want to first increase the velocity, then we want to cut the velocity. Why we are increasing the velocity? Because the rotor blades are not only increasing the velocity, but increasing the pressure as well. And we want to take that pressure and cut that velocity vector. So that is the reason we are having first rotor then stator. So when we have the first stage of rotor and stator, when we have this first stage of rotor and stator, this is the stator, this is the stator. So before this, we have variable inlet guide vanes. Just like in the case of compressor, I have already, already taught you that we have variable inlet guide vanes. Similarly, we have variable inlet guide vanes here as well that that are uh, nothing but like a doorman of the engine which allows certain amount of air to come at a particular angle of attack. Angle of attack is uh, nothing but the angle at which the air comes and attack the compressor and then the same amount of air goes and also hits the turbine. So how does variable inlet guide vanes looks? It looks like this. You can see this is the first stage of rotor. rotor. And before this, we have variable inlet guide vanes, variable IGV. It is also called as IGV inlet guide vanes. So it looks like this and it can vary in their, uh, in their rotation. They can be like this, then they can be like this, they can be like this, like this, or maybe they can be like this. So you can imagine how the angle would be changing as per the requirement of air. Now let's again summarize the difference between the centrifugal flow compressor and axial flow compressor. So we know centrifugal flow compressor are more robust like a Nokia 1100, right? So they can be, they cannot be broken very easily and they are highly robust. Whereas axial flow compressor are not comparatively robust, not that robust. Now, uh, centrifugal flow compressor are easy to manufacture because again, just like Nokia 1100 is very easy to manufacture. Similarly, they are also very easy to manufacture. Though it is not that bad as Nokia 1100, I am just saying. Now, axial flow compressor are because the, because the shape and design is very typical, it is not, not easy to manufacture. Tough to, ma ma tough to manufacture. Tough to manufacture. 
Now the third is the cost. The cost of the centrifugal compressor is low. Low cost compared to the axial flow compressor. Then comes the thrust. As we know that axial flow compressor can generate a lot of pressure. That is nothing but 35 to 1. That means 1 Pascal could be converted, 1 Pascal of air could be converted to 35 Pascal. This high pressure will provide us with high thrust. That, that is the reason it is it is providing us with more thrust, whereas it, it provides us with less thrust as it converts 15 to 1, whereas it is converting 35 to 1. That means it converts 1 Pascal of air into 15 Pascal centrifugal compressor. So this is less thrust producing, whereas axial flow compressor is more thrust producing, right? Now coming to the next part that is low compression ratio. Com low compression ratio because it is 15 ratio 1 and high compression ratio because it is 35 ratio 1. 35 to 1 and 15 to 1. Okay. Now let's see the different condition because of which engine breakdown may happen. So first is stall. Stall is nothing but a partial breakdown of airflow through the engine. Remember this term because this comes again for one mark. Whatever is there in the bold is very important. So a partial breakdown of airflow through the engine can lead to stall. Stall is nothing but partial breakdown of airflow or we can say partial breakdown of engine itself. So indications of this partial breakdown could be engine vibration, high engine vibration. Uh, as a pilot, you should know if the engine is vibrating, then there's a partial breakdown or the stall is happening. Second is exhaust gas temperature rise. That means if a gas at the exhaust is at a very high temperature, then we can say that there is stall which is happening. Why we can say that stall is happening by the EGT? We can say that because if the air is not coming enough, then the air inside will be heated more and more by the combustion chamber and that will be passing through the turbine and that will not even produce a large amount of pressure to the turbine so turbine will also rotate slowly and because of that will get more of the energy released or unused so because of that we will get a high amount of energy at the exhaust that energy will be mostly in form of heat and that is the reason exhaust gas temperature also defines us and tells us that the stall is taking place now, what could be the condition of the stall? So, imagine a compressor. Like, see a compressor. What we know about a compressor that it requires air to pass through it. And now, we'll only talk about axial flow compressor. Most of the times, we'll only talk about axial flow compressor because that is the compressor which is widely used. So, we'll only talk about that type of compressor that is used in our aircraft, which you as a passenger aircraft pilot will be uh, driving the jet engines which will be having axial flow compressors. Now understand this very carefully. What is the property of a compressor? The property of the compressor is to compress the air at a very high rate. That means at a particular time more and more amount of air should get compressed so that our turbine will rotate at a very high rate. right? And if the turbine rotate, we will be able to travel at a very high rate, very fast rate. That is what we want, correct? So what we want we want to compress the air at a very high rate if the air speed is good then only more and more air will be able to like transfer very fast from from the compressor to combustion chamber to the turbine to the exhaust the air speed will be higher only if the inlet air speed is higher then only throughout the engine the air speed will be higher correct so what does this mean? The axial velocity of air should be higher so that the compressor should will not be stalling. That means what? That the air inlet, the air which is coming inside the engine should be coming at a high axial, axial velocity. That means the air should not be coming like this. The air should not be come entering like this. It should not be entering like this. If it is entering at an angle, then you know by the vector that it will create a horizontal component and a vertical component. So we will not get a good velocity vector for the air inlet. And if the velocity vector at the air, at the air inlet is low, then the compressor will stall sooner or later. So what we want, we want high axial velocity. That means this axial velocity should be high. That means the velocity vector should be axially oriented or it should tend to be actually oriented.
Now, what is the second condition? The second condition is our compressor blade should run at a very good speed. That means the rotational speed of the blades, the compressor blade, the rotor blades should be good. If it is getting damaged, then the compressor will get stalled. Or if the turbine has some problem, then also the compressor will get stalled. And because of compressor stall, the engine will get stalled. So overall, this rotational speed of the compressor should match the axial velocity of air. When these two are synchronous, then only the engine will not get stalled. Otherwise, in all the other cases, the engine can stall. Now, what could be the different condition in which the compressor could stall? Let's see that one by one. Excessive fuel flow caused by abrupt engine acceleration. What we know when we have an engine like this, if we have an engine like this, if it is, if it is not accelerating, the air is coming like this. But when it accelerates, more amount of air will be coming like, uh, like this. If more amount of air is coming and if the engine is not very much prepared or if we can say the fuel, uh, fuel combustion chamber is very small, it cannot take a lot of air which is coming inside. So what will happen after a certain time, this will be producing a back pressure. This will be producing a back pressure. That means the pressure would be in this direction towards the turbine. But this time the turbine is not able to take a lot amount of volume of air. So what will happen? Some air will be getting stuck here itself. If it is getting stuck here itself, then what will happen? Less and less amount of air will be able to churn through the compressor. Less and less air will be able to come through the compressor or we can say the compressor will eventually stop after a certain time because there is so much air which is getting processed through the combustion chamber that there is high amount of back pressure that means there is no space inside the compressor chamber that is the reason the compressor will eventually work at its at its half efficiency and that is a problem of the stall so we can say excessive fuel flow caused by abrupt engine acceleration cause compressor stall that is nothing but the axial velocity is reduced by increasing combustion chamber back pressure. Now we come to the second point that is engine operation above or below the engine design RPM parameter. So if we are traveling with a higher speed than the design speed and if we are traveling at a lower speed than the design speed, what will happen? The compressor can stall and engine can even stop. Just imagine if you are traveling by a bike. And if you're traveling at a very slow speed, what will happen? The bike can fall, correct? The bike has a tendency to fall. Whereas, like if you're going at a very high speed, the engine will be overworking. Similarly, the compressor will be overworking when compressor blades will be overworking when you are having a very high RPM because there will be a lot of air which is coming. So there will be very high RPM and that will also lead to back pressure. Whereas if you are at a very low speed, then the compressor will not get the energy to rotate itself. So if the compressor does not rotate properly or if the air is coming less or very high, then there is imbalance between the rotational speed of the compressor and the axial velocity of the air that will lead to stall. Now let's come to the third part that is turbulent or disrupted airflow to the engine intake. If there is turbulent flow from the outside, that means if the air, air is not coming streamlined, that means the air particle is not coming like this, they're coming like this, they are highly turbulent. That means because of a uh, thunderstorm or because of some wind changes or wind pattern changes, what is there? Uh, like there is a high turbulence in the air that will give us less angle of attack, less angle of attack of the velocity, less axial velocity of air. If we get less axial velocity or reduced axial velocity, then there could be a chances of compressor stall. Now let's talk about the contaminated or damaged compressor components. If the compressor got damaged uh, by friction, by overwearing, by over a lot of by a lot of fun like working continuously working for a longer time, if the con compressor got damaged or if it got com contaminated by the salt water, just imagine the salt also get evaporated when, when we go above the sea, the salt also get evaporated and that salt gets stick to the compressor. Because of this, the compressor rotational speed and the efficiency of the compressor will, will reduce. And because of this, there would be imbalance between the axial velocity of air inlet and the compressor. And again, there could be a chances of compressor stall. 
then we come to the point e contaminated or damaged turbine again if just like if you have damaged uh, if you have damaged compressor it will be leading to a stall similarly damaged turbine because if turbine does not rotate then how will the compressor rotate so if the turbine is uh, getting dam damaged or if it is getting contaminated by dust particle or by if it is getting contaminated by sea water then the efficiency of turbine will decrease and because of that the rotational speed will also decrease and that will lead to compressor stall then comes the point f excessively lean fuel air mixture caused by abrupt engine deceleration when you decelerate your engine was having a very rich fuel uh, ratio now lean fuel will happen due to your decreased in speed if you decrease your speed the fuel will also decrease so that the speed could be decreased so because of this less rich fuel what will happen the turbine will not be able to get good amount of thrust so that is the reason we can say that could again cause a compressor stall now what we know that if any of this condition actually follows in a real uh, life what will happen the com compressor will definitely stall what is stall stall means partial bre breakdown of airflow that means it will also lead to partial breakdown of engine itself and in theory what happens it start it could initially start with just one blade and worsening to encompass the whole one stage so it start with one blade then one stage and then whole compressor gets stalled uh, stalled or we can say whole compressor gets stopped and once the whole compressor is stopped it is no more a stall because stall is nothing but partial breakdown this time the breakdown is happening complete that is called as surge now let's talk about surge in detail so surge is the progressive deterioration of situation that means continuously the situation is getting worse and worse and now the air flow will be completely stopped what will happen the air inside will get out it will be coming through the back pressure and also through the turbine and this will be creating a blast because there will be air which is hitting the which is hitting the compressor but is not able to go so all of a sudden you will be uh, hearing a blast and that blast can also you know that blast can damage the compressor's blades that can make the compressor blade bend and uh, the first rotor and stator can join together may join together if the blast is big enough and if the speed was too high if the plane speed was too high so what we can say in cases in severe cases that could this could cause an instantaneous reversal of gases in the engine with air being expelled through the engine intake with a loud bang if a surge with a loud bang if a surge does occur the throttle of the affected uh, affected engine must be closed slowly that means that means the engine throttle through which we we provide the fuel to the engine that should be closed slowly otherwise what will happen this will be giving more of the blast type situation and more damage could incur if you close the engine fastly or abruptly if you close it slowly then it gets time to adjust with that we can save some of the engine parts now let's talk about surge in detail so what we know the complete breakdown of engine after certain time of stall will be called as surge surge is nothing but progressive deterioration of situation will eventually cause a complete big breakdown of air flow through the engine called surge in severe cases it could cause instantaneous reversal of gases because there would be gases inside at high pressure that would be coming out through the compressor itself and once it this reversal happened what will happen there would be a big blast and this blast could damage the rotor and the stator blades and this will cost a lot this will make the compressor totally incapable of doing anything and if the surge does occur the throttle of the affected engine must be closed slowly that means the throttle by which we provide a lot of fuel that should be closed slowly otherwise what will happen more of the injury or more of the damage could take place so this situation is caused by fuel system malfunction or mishandling and we also know because of the imbalance of rota uh, rotational speed of the compressor and the axial velocity of the air inlet so how to prevent this type of thing we don't want our compressor or we don't want our engine to not work if the engine doesn't work the plane will fall isn't it if either of the engine doesn't work then still we will be able to fly but 
there would be some issues, right? And we have to land the plane as soon as possible if the engine fails. So prevention of stall and, and surge, how to prevent that stall and surge by different ways. There are many different ways. First is variable inlet guide vanes, variable stator vanes, <clears throat> compressor ble bleeds, multi-spool compressor and active clearance control ACC. So le let's first so let's first see the first part, which is variable inlet guide vanes. What are inlet guide vanes? They are the doorman of the engine, right? So they are the doorman. And once if you keep the door like perpendicular, then all the air will come. But if you keep the door at an angle, what will happen? The air will come at an angle. If the air comes at an angle, it will be hitting the compressor at an angle. And that angle could be savior for the engine. Why? Because if you are giving a good angle to the compressor, to the compressor, then it will be providing a bigger thrust to, to the compressor. So that is what we want. We want a high speed air. And if that high speed air could hit the compressor at a very high speed, then it will be very useful. So at low compressor speed, at low compressor speed, what happens? The variable inlet guide vanes are angled to impart the greatest amount of swirl. So greatest amount of swirl to the air, thereby correcting the relative flow, relative air flow to obtain the optimum angle of attack over the rotor blades. So we'll get the optimum angle of attack in that way. If we keep the rotor blades at some angle, if we keep the variable inlet guide vanes at, a, at some angle, when the uh, engine speed is low, then what will happen? We'll get a good thrust. And we also want the air to carry some velocity with it. Otherwise, it will be getting stalled in the middle itself. So this optimum angle of attack allows a smooth and rapid engine acceleration. So we know that variable inlet guide vanes are present in the engine, in the engine start, and that helps in uh, giving the compressor a good angle of attack velocity. Now the second part is variable stator vanes. Variable stator vanes can be pivoted automatically so that the compressor speed is reduced from the optimum design value. They are progressively close to maintain an accept, uh, acceptable angle of attack. That means variable stator vanes has a switch. You know, there is a switch to a TV, right? Like that, we have a switch. You can see these are the switch. Can you see this? Yeah, these are the switch which are there. So we don't need to switch them at an angle. These switches work automatically with the help of a computer or with the help of flight computers and with the help of different mechanism where, by which according to certain uh, speed, they, they are like confined to an angle. Just imagine if the speed is low, then they will be like this. If the speed is high, they will be like this. If the speed is like uh, too high, then again, they will be like this. Like this, uh, they will be able to balance the amount of air which is coming. Now, next comes variable stator vanes. Variable stator vanes can be pivoted automatically. So, blue ones are stators and red ones are rotors. Rotors rotate. Stators does not rotate, but they can rotate on its axis. You know, they are variable stator vanes. They are pivoted automatically so that the compressor speed is reduced from the optimum design value. So, they are progressively closed. To maintain an accept, acceptable angle of attack, they are open like this. Once they are closed like this a bit, what will happen? The angle of attack will be changing the angle. The air was coming like this earlier. Now it will be coming like this at an angle. It will be hitting the rotor part of the compressor. So that is how we will be able to run the compressor properly without any stall. Then comes the compressor bleeds. Compressor bleeds are very important part and they are there in the low, uh, like when the plane is about to start at low speeds and they are there at very high speeds as well. They are provided right after the low pressure compressor and if this is the low pressure compressor and this is high pressure compressor, so com compressor bleed are provided, are like applied here. And sometimes between the high pressure compressor, because we have low pressure compressor also have stages, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, stage five, stage six. So uh, after stage five or stage six uh, of the low pressure compressor, we have compressor bleed one and there is bleed two, sec bleed second also. So these two bleeds join together later on and then they, they are provided as a single bleed source. So what is this bleeds? These compressor bleeds are nothing but high pressure air 
and this high pressure air also have high temperature as we discussed that high pressure also increases the temperature and decreases the velocity so what happens why we are actually taking this compressor bleed because there is a lot of a uh, lot of air which is coming inside the compressor sometimes and if there is a lot of air coming inside the compressor all of a sudden what will happen there could be a chance of back pressure to avoid back pressure what we do we release some of the air if we release some of the air you can also imagine that there would be loss of efficiency of the overall engine if you are taking some of the air from the engine what will happen the engine's overall efficiency will decrease but that is fine for us until and unless it is not getting stalled we don't want our engine to get stalled and that is the reason we provide compressor bleeds so let's read out what is there in the uh, theory the excess volume volume of air at higher speed causes choking in the rear of the compressor that means there's a chance of back pressure that is nothing but choking in the rear of the compressor and a decrease in mass flow that means if if there is a lot of choking in the back side of the compressor what will happen there would be no mass flow happening that means the air is getting stalled there so all the different section will be slowly getting stalled so this in turn causes a decrease in velocity of air in the front of the compressor and increase the tendency to stall if the compressor bleed if a compressor bleed valve is introduced into the intermediate stages uh, stages of the compressor it can be opened at low rpm or during engine acceleration to allow some of the excess volume of air to escape so at low rpm we don't want high volume of air so to remove that high volume of air what we can do we can have that some compressor bleed after the right after the low pressure compressor and during the acceleration of plane what will happen again we'll get a lot of air because we are accelerating so that air will will not be able to digest by the combustion chamber so we want some bleed to get that excess of air out and this excess of air can be brought out with the help of high pressure bleed so right after the first stage of high pressure compressor there is a compressor bleed and sometimes after two stages of high pressure compressor there is a compressor bleed now where is this air going let's understand where is this air going so first of all we have to understand this air is at high pressure and this is very hot air so this hot air can be used as anti icing agent as our aircraft wings are uh, like at very high altitude and they get iced up at the tip at the leading edge of the wings we can heat them with the compressor bleeds and also the rudder also get iced up so we can also heat the rudder with the help of compressor bleed but this is also used as a refrigeration and the same bleed is also used as a air conditioning source how this is mixed or this is like partially somehow conducted and mixed with the refrigerant and once this air high pressure air is mixed with refrigerant this could be used as a bleed air for air conditioning inside the plane now as we already discussed that if you are taking this bleed air what will happen there could be decrease in thrust like in a longer run we can see the disadvantages there could be decrease in thrust of course there would be decrease in thrust and specific fuel consumption has to increase because if you are having less amount of air then the fuel consumption has to increase so that the turbine can rotate functionally right and then we have high amount of exhaust gas temperature because less amount of air is there and more combustion chamber uh, combustion chamber is producing more heat then this will also generate loss of energy because the turbine will not be able to convert full heat into energy so some energy will be getting lost as a exhaust gas so exhaust gas temperature will also increase and specific fuel consumption will also increase and thrust will decrease but this is overall fine unless and until this is used uh, uh, unless and until this is helping us to control the overall stall condition now let's look at one of the numerical one indication that a compressor bleed valve has stuck close at low rpm is first possible compressor stall second an inability to achieve full power third that bleed air is reduced fourth that engine will stop think and answer <clears throat> good question so indication that a compressor bleed valve has stuck close at low rpm that means the bleed valve had got closed at low rpm at low rpm what could be the reason for that the reason could be there is possible compressor stall that is the answer 
because if there is a possible compressor stall what will happen there would be low like the rotation of the compressor will be low and if the rotation of compressor is low then all the pressure all the air will be going at the back side to the high pressure compressor only and there would be less or no bleed air coming okay if we see the other options and inability to achieve full power yes of course it is not achieving full power so we don't need to like we are not talking about that is not the reason then that that bleed air is reduced bleed air is reduced but why it is reduced we want to know that then uh, like that is because the possible compressor stall is there there is chances of compressor stall that is the reason the bleed air is reduced right that the engine will stop this is one of the cause they say but actually the engine will stop is the final result the engine may stop and may not stop if the engine would have would be stopping then you know we don't care about bleed air first we have to generate the we have to start the engine right so engine will stop after certain amount of time if you don't do anything to prevent the stall so possible compressor stall is the first thing which should come in your head if you're not getting bleed air now let's come to the next part which could avoid the surge so that is multi spool compressor if you have single spool compressor that will have high chances of surge and stall whereas multi spool compressor is more efficient and that is the reason it has less chances of getting stalled and surge then we have the last but not the least that is active clearance control what is active clearance control the basic problem with all the cases of the stall is that the angle of attack of the airflow over the blade is no longer at its optimum value of course so what we learned by the first line is if we get angle of attack of the air which is coming inside if the angle of attack of that air is good then there would be no compressor stall right so we want to design the engine in such a way that the angle of attack should be higher all the time and continuously the compressor is increasing the pressure and decreasing the velocity and because of this decrease in velocity what would happen there could be chance of compressor stall correct or not so what i want to do i want to make a compressor which will not stall i want to make a compressor which will not stall but also will increase the compressing ability so i want high pressure also but i also want high velocity sometimes now let's come to the last part which will help us to prevent surge and stall that is active clearance control the basic problem with all the cases of stall is that angle of attack of the air flow over the blade is no longer at its optimum value correct because as the air come in it comes at a very nice angle of attack but as it goes inside the pressure continuously increases and because of the stator blades the velocity is continuously decreasing but we want to increase the pressure and because of that we have to cut the velocity but because of this cutting of the velocity there could be a chance of compressor stall because it is no more uh, like pushing the in inner part of the compressor that means if we see this if we see a compressor if we see a compressor like this this is the compressor and these are the many stages of the compressor so what we can say the air was having high velocity which was able to hit the compressor at a good angle of attack but now the air is losing its energy and that is the reason it is not having good angle of attack because of which the compressor sooner or later can get stalled so how to maintain a good velocity even after keeping the stator and rotor blades to make that happen we have to change the shape of the compressor so this inner part is called as rotor drum this inner part is called as rotor drum so one method of accomplishing this is to vary the size of the air annulus at high pressure end of the compressor so what is air annulus air annulus is the space between the rotor drum and the compressor outer casing is called air annulus this is the rotor drum and this is the outer casing so it is a space between the rotor drum and the compressor outer casing that is called as air annulus so this is outer casing and this is the rotor drum the space between them is called as air annulus okay so what is happening in this that we have this blades of the compressor like this you can imagine blades of the compressor that is rotor and you can also imagine stator some, somewhere here then i have one more blade like this 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 
one more blade like this and there is stator here stator here stator here stator here stator 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 so what i can say by this design what i am getting i am getting a good velocity as well you may ask how i am getting good velocity by this design of the air annulus if you see this nicely you will find that this is nothing but a convergent nozzle this is nothing but a convergent nozzle correct so velocity has to increase here and pressure has to decrease here. So we'll have the pressure. Don't worry about the pressure because pressure is already increased because of a lot of rotors and stators with the help of air annulus design. The velocity will also be maintained till the end of the compressor. So this is how we make the air annulus so that we get always we get a good amount of velocity. You can see there's a different shapes of air annulus for different types of engines. You can see here also there's an air, air annulus like this. So you can see all are divergent in shape. That means they all want to increase the velocity as the air goes inside so that it can hit with a good energy and good angle of attack all the time. So the size of the air annulus is reduced to maintain the axial velocity of the air as it passes through the compressor as it is compressed into smaller and smaller volume that means density is increased. Now let's learn to build a compressor. Let's start with the casing, compressor casing. If we see this compressor casing, this part, the initial part of the compressor casing is aluminum alloy. Then intermediate part of the compressor casing is steel alloy. And the last part is nickel alloy. Can you tell me why there is different uh, types of metals used to make a compressor casing? Because the starting part will not be facing a lot of heat, whereas steel alloy can withstand more heat and nickel alloy can withstand a lot of heat. That is the reason we are taking different shades of uh, metals to make the compressor casing because nickel alloy can withstand a lot of heat and resistance like it can uh, withstand a lot of air pressure as well. So to withstand that kind of air pressure, we want a good, strong air casing. Got it? Now you may ask, now you may ask that, why don't we make the full casing of nickel alloy? Because nickel is highly costly. We want to save and we want to cut down the cost as well. Then talking about the rotor blades, the rotating blades, what are they made up of? So lo low pressure compressor, uh, some stages are made up of titanium. Okay, some stages are made up of titanium. Why titanium? Because it is very light in weight and it is very strong as well. But titanium is not used for the last parts or the later parts. Why? Because titanium can melt at high temperature. And because the compressor also increases the temperature, we cannot use titanium for the inner part of the compressors. So we use stainless. Uh, so we use stainless steel at the inner part of the compressor. Then we have stator veins. Stator veins are made up of steel or nickel alloy. Again, very uh, strong metal to withstand high temperature and high pressure. Then attached to the casing, longer veins are shrouded uh, to decrease vibration. So. What are these longer veins? Longer veins are nothing but we have stator veins and rotor veins, right? So the stator veins are shrouded. That means the stators, which are, if we see the stator veins, they are like this. If this is the casing, then the stator veins are like this, right? If the stator veins are like this, just wait, I will make it completely. So these stator veins are joined like this. These stator veins are joined like this. They are shrouded so that these stator veins edges will not vibrate like this. Otherwise, at very high pressure and temperature and uh, high velocity of the air, what will happen? These stator veins will continuously rotate. If this continuously rotate, what will happen? This will hamper the wind. It will hamper the angle of attack of the air which is coming inside. So that will overall hamper the efficiency of the compressor. To prevent this from happening, we shroud the larger veins of the compressor. We shroud the larger veins or the stator part of the compressor. So this is how we so this is how we shroud the stator part of the compressor. This is how we join the upper part and the lower part so that it cannot vibrate. It cannot vibrate like this. Okay. So you can see how we have made like two design. There, there is one design like this. There is one type like this and another type like this. This is called as drum type rotor. 
another is called as disc type rotor this is also one more question which may come in exam what type of rotors are there there is drum type rotor and disc type rotor so air comes inside from this part and then it passes through the drum type and there is a disc type this is disc type rotor okay now these are the two types of rotor now let's come now let's come to the fan blades. So we are not talking about the rotor, but the fan blades, the propeller blade, the propeller type bypass fan blades. So we're talking about fan blades that are made up of titanium because they are strong and light. For that purpose, we use the fan like this, which has high strength and very light in nature. Now, as we know that the fans are made up of titanium, we want to make it more durable. So for that to happen, we have uh, made the core of honeycomb core and there is titanium skin. Inside will be titanium. So this will be titanium and outside will be some composite material. So in that way, these blades will be running for longer time. And in this manner, the strength will also not reduce and they will be able to function for a longer time. Now let's come to the last part that is compressor and turbine contamination. So accumulation of contaminants in both compressor and turbine section of the engine decreases the efficiency of the overall engine and decreases the performance of the engine as well. What could be the cause? Cause could be the sea salt. When you're traveling through the seaways, what will happen? The sea salt will be accumulated to the compressor blades and the turbine blade and that could hamper the overall performance and sometimes the uh, pollution that means nitrous oxide, uh, nitrous oxide in air and some other dirt and pollutants can also pollute and uh, harm the turbine blades and the compressor blades. Now let's come to the question for the last time. So the first question is as air passes through an axial flow compressor a pressure rise takes place in first the impeller and the diffuser, the rotor blades only, both rotor blades and stator, bla stator vanes, the stator vanes only. Think and answer. It is all about what is the nomenclature. So we know in axial flow compressor what happens. There is rotor and stator. There is not impeller and uh, uh, impeller and diffuser. There is rotor and stator in, uh, status in stator veins in axial flow compressor. So we have both rotor and stator veins uh, which increases the pressure. That means the uh, pressure increases inside the rotor blades also with the help of rotor blades also and with the help of stator blades also the pressure only rise. We have seen that diagram, right? We have seen that graph which shows that rotor blades and stator blades both helps in making the air pressure rise. Let's come to the second question. In the event of surge occurring, the correct action to be taken is to close the throttle quickly, to close the throttle slowly, to open throttle quickly, to close low pressure fuel valve. Think I've already given the answer earlier. If you check the video properly or you can go to that video timestamp. So in the event of surge occurring, the correct action to be taken is to close the throttle slowly, not quickly, but slowly otherwise it will more contribute to surge and it will be even harming the engine if you close the throttle quickly. So you have to close the throttle slowly. The last but not the least question is the shrouding of stator blade tips is designed to to prevent tip turbulence to ensure adequate cooling to minimize vibration to prevent tip losses. So as I told you the major thing is yes of course uh, to a, for a lot of reasons it could be used but the major reason is to minimize vibrations. With this, we have completed the topic called Compressor of Jet Engine of Technical General. So if you like this, please like this video and subscribe to us to get more and more content on our channel. And please share with all your friends, all your pilot friends and uh, do comments all the doubts. And also please join us if you want to solve a lot more questions on compressor and different topics. And if you want to study everything in detail and also if you give us 400 likes, we will continue this chapter fully.